Today, I will be discussing idiopathic capillary leak syndrome, which is a rare condition, although associated with a high morbidity and mortality if not recognized early. There are three distinct phases, prodromal, extravasation, and recovery phases, and it is characterized by a triad of three H's, hypotension, hemoconcentration, and hypoalbuminemia. For our case, a 57-year-old morbidly obese man with systolic heart failure and recurrent episodes of presumed sepsis, although without clear infectious sources, presented with an episode of near syncope and abdominal pain. On vitals, he was afebrile but hypotensive with a blood pressure of 72 over 61. He had mottled skin on his back, 3-plus pitting edema, and cold, clammy extremities bilaterally. Labs were notable for a leukocytosis to 19, hemoconcentration to 17, and hypoalbuminemia to 2.9. He was treated with 5 liters of fluid for presumed sepsis, and notably developed a worsening leukocytosis to 33.1, hemoglobin of 20.2, albumin of 2.3, and also developed an AKI with a creatinine of 2.54. On hospital days 1 through 3, he was treated with conservative fluid resuscitation, he had a worsening AKI, but his blood pressures improved and blood cultures were negative, so antibiotics were discontinued. On hospital days 4 through 15, he was treated with aggressive diuresis. He did develop numerous GI complications, including bowel obstruction from gut edema, upper GI bleed, and ischemic colitis. We conducted a further workup of capillary leak syndrome, which revealed an M spike on SPEP, and on day 15, he was finally discharged after making a full recovery. For the discussion, capillary leak syndrome is a rare condition with less than 500 cases described since 1960. However, a rising incidence suggests that this condition may be more common than previously thought. It is frequently misdiagnosed as septic shock, anaphylaxis, or polycythemia vera. Early recognition is important as severe complications are common and associated with high rates of mortality. On the top right is a graphical depiction of some of the most common complications of capillary leak syndrome many of which our patient had. The mechanism of capillary leak syndrome is unclear but may be related to monoclonal proteins as many patients are found to have an associated monoclonal gammopathy during acute attacks. Complications include end-organ ischemia, flash pulmonary edema, and compartment syndrome, especially in the recovery phase, which is why it is important to start diuresis early. And finally, there is some evidence that IVIG or terbutaline and theophylline may play a role in preventing recurrent attacks of capillary leak syndrome. My last point is to remember the characteristic three H's of hypotension, hemoconcentration, and hypoalbuminemia. So if this condition does arise in your future practice, you'll be able to catch it as quickly as possible.